here's some comparisons with NVRAM. Uh, here's NAND flash, hard drive, and DRAM. Let's talk about latency first. It's, these aren't milliseconds, so it's just like, not even talk about this. These are microseconds, that's even smaller than DRAM. DRAM takes 10 nanoseconds and, uh, to read and write. And this is information from 2009, so it's pretty outdated, but it's probably, these um, NVRAM technologies are probably a lot better now in 2013, 2014. So as of 2009, phase change memory takes 20 nanoseconds to read and 100 nanoseconds to write. Same chance, chance for torque. Four years, of, three years ago, four years ago, it was about the same speed as DRAM during that time. That's four years ago. So that's huge. And look at the difference between energy cost when programming. 0 0.02 picojoule. That is really small amount of energy you need just to change the uh, bytes. Whereas DRAM, it takes two picojoules. It's not including the refresh um, cycle when you're jamming with DRAM. Write and during uh, flash 10 to the fourth to 10 to the sixth. P uh, phase change memory 10 to the eighth to 10 to the ninth. And SCDR is 10 to the 15th, so it's going to take a long time just to break it that big. And spell this to me. F squared means the x and y direction. Um, I don't really know the innards of what that means, but those are the notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, some OS notifications. All right. I guess we have some time. Uh, what are some proposed, if you were to use and RAM in your current computer system, how would you do it? This is a question to you guys. Like, if you have your CPU, your memory, and your storage, where would you put it in this diagram? Not CPU. Hmm? Not CPU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Not the CPU. Anybody want to take a start the guard and do the guard? Below CPU above memory. Below CPU above memory? So you would put that right here? Yeah. I mean, like, if it's good enough, we can just replace memory entirely, right? Yeah. Replace no. okay. yeah. memory entirely. That's pretty much a revolutionary idea right there. <laughs> so, this dude um, from Korea propose these two different, or actually, no, no, no. You, when people from UW propose these type of architectures, you can just do the evolutionary idea of just replacing the disk, which is DRAM. You can even have your memory system be shared between DRAM and NVRAM. So those, that's pretty interesting. But a really a revolutionary idea is completely remove memory, or DRAM, and just put NVRAM into that. So, the problem with that is that, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. So, if uh, a possible architecture for cellular phones is, in your current uh, cell phone right now, you have a processor, some RAM, a NOR flash to hold your boot sequence, and some NAND flash to hold your OS and your storage. Well, if we just do the revolutionary idea of just, uh, taking the whole entire room, DRAM out and put NVRAM, this is all you need right there. And that reduces the amount of wires you need between uh, these components. So less wires, smaller bus, good for everyone. So when you're dealing with OS, one of the, okay, no less. Some of the main components of OS is uh, CPU management, memory management, file system, some I.O. management type of stuff, and device drivers, and some error management type of, uh, of program. So when you, a basic program is, uh, basic program, you have your CPU, your memory and your storage. So, 
we usually when you um, do some programs, you take some data, bring it into memory, you use a CPU to mess with it. So let's do make this east to foo, I'll make this bar. And after you're done with these changes, you push it back into uh, disk. So that's the basic uh, process of what programs do now. But if we do the revolutionary idea of just taking out the VRAM and storage into one system, do you really need this two level of store? So, uh, if you don't have this two level of store, do you need disk pages? So, pages, pages that map to disk? Do you still need the buffer cache, the area where it does its scheduling or whatever? whatever? Will page faults actually happen? Because you don't have disk, because everything's in memory anyways. So if, if you're doing the revolutionary idea of NV, uh, the whole entire system consists of a CPU and NVRAM, there's no need for swapping. And what does booting mean in this sense? Okay. <laughs> so some virtual memory questions. Oh, yeah, virtual memory. Uh, what virtual memory does is it does some process of uh, process abstraction, memory some memory protection, so another program can't stomp all over another program's uh, address space. It handles memory uh, allocation and it amortizes the latency of disk uh, disk seeks. So that's what the, the disk scheduler is used for. And uh, they also give you some swap space when you have some page faults. Or so, what if you have um, no paging at all and just remove paging? So, I got this from UW. Some this link to a Stanford project where it's called RAM Cloud. They made a system where the whole entire system is just RAM. So your programs, your uh, files are all in RAM. And they implemented this without using paging, pages. So that's one thing to look at into. So if you do keep pages, what would be the appropriate size for this device for backwards compatibility? So, and here's another paper um, to a school I don't know where that's from. But they implemented uh, the programs all share one address space. So that's pretty weird. But that could be a possibility with um, when you're uh, implementing some virtual memory uh, services. Are we good?